And no, I didn't always feel comfortable talking about my bag. today we would talk a little bit about how I became an advocate, all the different steps that I took to feel more comfortable talking about both Crohn's disease and ostomies. I've gotten a few questions about how to feel comfortable talking about your disease and how to really advocate for it, people who want to start YouTube channels or blogs or things like that. So I thought I would talk about my journey going through and really just being okay with, with sharing my story. And no, I didn't always feel comfortable talking about my bag. When I was first diagnosed, I was 11 and honestly never really saw myself as being any kind of advocate for it. Um, I hated my disease and I definitely didn't want to talk about it. But as time went on, I realized how it positively impacted my life and how much it really did change it. So I decided to use it for good. I might as well get something good out of this stupid disease that cost me so much, right? Like that was my thinking as time went on. So I started off by telling friends against the advice of my family. I would tell friends, I would tell more, I don't want to say distant relatives, but more distant relatives about my disease and kind of what I've been through. This more started towards when I got my bag than when um, I was just dealing with Crohn's disease alone. When I had Crohn's, by itself, it was much easier to hide. Um, I could kind of fake my way through being well, but once I got my ostomy, I kind of had more physical, you know, proof that something was wrong with me. So that was really the point at which I took it into my hands and decided I'm gonna tell people. So I started telling friends slowly. My closest friend, Kelsey, is the one that named my ostomy Leroy, and it's didn't name that to this day. And I basically did that to gauge reactions because I wasn't really sure how people were going to react. Um, but my friends were just like, hey, okay, that's you. This is what's going on with you now. You have a bag on your stomach. We don't really care. So that gave me the encouragement to tell more and more people. During this new time with my ostomy, I also decided to learn as much as I could about it. I spent hours on online forums reading about ostomies, all the different things like how do I shower with it? How do I swim with it? What can I wear? What's gonna make it stick? What's gonna make it fall off? What's gonna make it explode? I looked at all of this stuff because I wanted to be able to talk about it myself. I wanted to be able to teach people about it. When I first heard of an ostomy, I had a totally different like idea in my mind of what it would be. I did not realize it was a plastic bag that stuck onto you with adhesive. About six months after, I decided to share my ostomy online to people, to friends or, you know, acquaintances at school that I may not necessarily talk to, but we're friends on Facebook or something like that. I put my profile picture of me with my ostomy, just like holding my shirt up, kind of doing a selfie. And I got a ton of positive response on it people I didn't talk to at school liked it. So that was my first real share on social media. Then I decided to get on YouTube. I used to make, embarrassing, um, I used to make YouTube videos about makeup. I'm not very good at it, but I really liked the whole being creative and making videos. So that's kind of where I started on YouTube. <laughs> that's where I started. And I decided to kind of totally flip over and just post a video saying, hi, I have Crohn's disease and anostomy. This is my new YouTube channel. And from there I told my story. I did like surgery videos. I did, you know, how to change your bag videos, like the really, if you go way back on my channel, you can find them, I, they're all still there. But I did all of those and I got such a positive response, just messages and emails from people saying, hey, I have this too and like, that's really cool, you're so brave to put that out there. I was like, wait, this isn't what I expected. Um, people were saying that they were encouraged by me sharing my story. I was just really looking for friends who also had that going on. Because I started sharing online on YouTube, I started to get connected to people who were much better at sharing their stories than myself. 
I got connected to bigger companies, one being Stonewise. I don't know if you have heard of it, but it is a um, company in the UK and they are all about stomas, all about ostomies. They are fantastic, um, just really friendly and fantastic advocates for ostomies. So being connected to them and some other companies that like obviously knew how to do it better than me, I was learning techniques and um, it just kind of helped me build my style for YouTube or websites or whatever I was doing that was going to be advocacy related. All the connections I was making with the different companies helped me to learn what was available to ostomy patients, stuff that you might not even think of, and that helped me be a better resource for people. I could tell people about a new product, a new belt, a new whatever, and that helped me build my, my knowledge base for patients like you. About a year or two after I got my ostomy is when I realized that I really enjoy teaching about ostomies and medical related devices and I decided it would be a great field for me to get into and that's why I went to school to be a registered nurse and you guys know that took a while but I did it. So not only did I get to learn a little bit more about Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis and ostomies, I got to learn about a range of diseases. So I became a little bit more well versed in all of the chronic illnesses. That's not saying that I am a genius on all of them but it was great to expand my knowledge. And obviously, after you go to nursing school, you go become a nurse. So I became a nurse. I've been working as a nurse for a little while now, um, a little bit under two years. And through that, I have learned how to deal with patients in person, which is kind of similar to talking to them online. I've learned how to be empathetic. I've learned how to listen better to people's stories. I've learned how to support them in ways that I didn't think I could support people. And it's helped me so much with my online advocacy and in-person advocacy. And what some of you might not realize is that I have, well, this is blaming the nurses on my floor who know that I do this. Um, I have a few patients who watch my videos. So if you're one of them, hi, <laughs> how's it going? <laughs> this is like my secret identity on the floor. Some of the nurses will tell their patients who have Crohn's or ostomies, oh, go check out Maggie's YouTube channel. And I'm like, oh, okay. But it is really cool to have patients in the hospital who have seen a couple of my videos and we get to talk about Crohn's. It's my favorite thing. They know it. They know it's my favorite. And all these steps have led on to the current step that I'm working on, and that's really connecting with other advocates. I want to learn from everybody how to better support patients. So right now I am um, not only working as a nurse, but also working with an ostomy company. I'm trying to go to different conferences to hear from WOCNs and, and people working on ostomy products. I'm just trying to push myself out there and meet people who do this as a living and um, and I'm so excited that that's kind of the season that I'm getting into. I know that I have so much more to learn, so many things that I will be able to do, so many opportunities that are available that I can't even imagine right now, but um, that's kind of where I am on my journey of advocacy and that's kind of how I went through all the different steps. This is, what year is this on my YouTube channel? This is year eight or nine? Year eight, year eight, sorry. Um, I just hit eight years on YouTube. I think it was February 1st. So that is where I am and I thought I would share that little journey with you in case you were wondering how to advocate for whatever you were working on or believing in. Um, it doesn't have to be a chronic illness, of course. So hopefully my little journey, my little journey <laughs> inspired you and uh, definitely let me know if you guys have any places that you do like online advocacy, any social media. All right guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.